Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present our latest research on the food energy water nexus at the Applied Energy 2022 online conference at the MIT and Harvard. We will talk about the food energy water nexus between eco modernism and the growth narrative, a welfare economics model approach. We will give a short introduction to our research theme. We will describe the green economy transformation concept. We will describe the two green economy models and we will present our CGE model framework and its social accounting matrix. We will discuss the results and explain the degrowth triangular based on the Harberger triangle. And we will summarize our findings. The NASA research shows the global surface temperature has increased by around one degree compared to 1880. The CO2 concentration in the atmosphere increased to 418 ppm in 2022. Therefore, the Arctic sea ice level left 13% per decade since 1979. The Greenland ice lost 275 billion tons per year and the Antarctica lost 152 billion tons. The UN demand that the world community has to change the current unsustainable consumption and production patterns to achieve a green economy with significantly lower CO2 emission to meet the Paris agreements. For achieving a green economy, IPCC identified two contrasting schools of thought called eco-modernism and degrowth. They offer important bounding narratives for green economy approaches that aim achieve the SDGs and the Paris Agreement goals. Ecomodernism tries to find technological solutions to decouple the greenhouse gas emissions and other environmental impacts from GDP growth. Ecomodernism relied thereby on green technology, technological innovations, resource efficiency, and higher productivity, sustainable rural and urban areas, climate change adaptation investments, decouple economic growth from negative external effects, and new job opportunities, especially for the lower income groups. The degrowth approach questions the general ab ability of the current linear economic system to decouple the greenhouse gas emissions and resource consumption from economic growth to meet the SDGs and the Paris Agreement goals. Therefore, the following instruments are discussed. A carbon emission permits framework welfare redistribution rather than economic growth. Degrowth supports universal basic income, work sharing, taxation of resource and energy extraction. We will discuss the economic consequences of these two concepts in a complex interconnected world. What overlaps exist between the two theories? What contradictions exist between the theories? The new green economy approaches 
of eco-modernism and degrowth scenarios will have an impact on all economic se sectors, especially on the food, energy, water, nexus sector, the key sectors for a sustainable development. A general equi equilibrium model is used to analyze the two green economy approaches consisting of two countries, an eco-modernist country A and a degrowth country B. We use a dynamic multinational computable general equilibrium model. The consumption sector is represented by one consumer per country. The consumer maximizes its utility. The budget is spent on consumption and savings. Savings are assumed to finance investment. The production sector of each country consists of three sectors, the food, energy, water sector, industry, and services. Each sector is represented by a firm which operates under perfect competition based on a capitalist production function using capital and labor. The social accounting matrix summarizes all economic trends actions in an economy. The social accounting matrix represents the stylized status quo data set of each country of our model economy. The data sets of the two social accounting matrix were compiled to illustrate and stress the effect of different growth scenarios in a model economy world unbiased. The Lehman crash and Euro crisis, Corona pandemic and war on Ukraine are not included. Table one shows the stylized social accounting matrix of eco-modernist eco country A, containing the expenditures for consumption, investment and exports and the capital and labor expenditures to enable the production of the cross output and the imports. Table two documents the economic status quo of the degrowth country B. The table shows that in all sectors, the total output of country B is at the beginning higher than that of country A. In both countries, the trade balance is balanced and export equal import. Our CGE model needs to be calibrated in order to reproduce the data sets of the status quo as determined by the social accounting matrix correctly. This requires the det determination of exogenous parameter values. The steady state growth rate, the interest and time preference rate between the countries in order to elaborate specifically and exclusively the effects of the different growth models. The eco-modernist country A will grow by 2.5% and the degrowth country B will shrink by 1%. The three economic sectors of each country includes also a cross-country food, energy, water nexus, where the agricultural sector is located in country A and the utility sectors are located in country B. Each country has a service and industry sector. The sectors therefore have different states of technology. The higher the level of output that can be produced by any particular combination of the input. The table shows that the industry sector of country B has the highest technological level followed by the service and utility sector of country B. The starting efficiency level of country B is in every sector higher than in country A. 
the efficiency parameter is the lowest for the agricultural sector of country A. The D cross triangular and the Harbarger triangle. The presented idea of the D cross triangular approach is built on the Harberger triangle approach of welfare economics, which is used to calculate the efficiency costs of taxes, government regulations, monopolistic practices, and various other market distortions. The degrowth approach can be interpreted as a distortion to the eco-modernist green economy approach summarized by the degrowth triangular. The triangular is now measured for the following economic indicators cross output CO2 emissions and the welfare of the people. The cross output is the result of the economic activities of the two economies. The cross output triangular of the two country economy is built over the observed 15 year period and expresses the differences in the development between the eco-modernist approach and the degrowth idea. The largest triangular between the eco-modernist country A and the degrowth country B is built in the service sector, followed by the cross country, food, energy, water sector and the industry sector. The emission identity of the two country is different to the different technological level of the two countries. The emissions are the result of the production and consumption patterns. The CO2 emission triangular of the two country economy is built also over the observed 15 year period. The service sector is creating the largest triangular between the two countries, followed by the food, energy, water sector and the industry sector. The sectoral triangular of the degrowth approach is very similar, where the eco-modernist approach causes different triangulars. The utility level is the measurable, measurable result of all economic activities in the two economies. The economic development of the two countries causes also a drifting of the utility level of the consumers of the two countries. The utility level of country A increases about nearly 40%, whereas the utility level of country B declines slightly about 13% over the 15 years analyzed. The development is expressed by the triangular between the eco-modernist country A and the degrowth country B. The development of the utility can influence the public opinion about the two, two green economy models. The analysis has shown that the two approaches of the green economy will cause a split of the development of the analyzed two economy system expressed in the triangular area. The challenge for the management of the food energy water nexus is that the cross country food energy water nexus is confronted with two different green economy approaches. The agricultural sector of country A follows an eco-modernism pathway where the utility sector of country B is on a degrowth pathway. This can cause economic tensions and stresses in the sector and between the countries and poses a major challenge to the management of the food, energy, water nexus. The war on Ukraine has caused severe distortions on the global food market and raised the question, should the food sector be excluded from the zero or negative growth assumptions of the degrowth approach to avoid an undersupply of the world expressed in the food triangular.
our model en enables us to determine and characterize the triangular. The triangular is in socioeconomic conflict zone between eco-modernist economic growth idea and social redistribution needs based on the degrowth approach. Thank you very much for your attention and we are happy to answer your questions.